Hi, I'm Hanjin from Furious AI. We develop high-performance commercial AI chips and full software stack used for inference in data centers. Today, I'd like to introduce a core idea of our architecture, the Tensor Contraction Processor. Similar to how ChatGPT and LLMs are shaping our daily lives today, AI will be part of everything we do in the future. This will require substantial energy worldwide, and our current infrastructure isn't set up to support that. It is critical that we find su sustainable AI compute solutions to realize the impact of AI inference for everyone. Tensor contractions dominate operations in deep learning. This can be seen in transformers as well, the basic structure of most deep learning models today. Key operators like feed-forward networks, linear and memory attention are tensor contractions. An analysis on BERT on the right shows that 99% of its flops result from these operations. So tensor contraction is a core fundamental computation in deep learning. You can think of it as a multidimensional version of matrix multiplication. When you talk about matrix multiplication, it's a, it is a tensor contraction of rank to tensors. However, most commercial deep learning accelerators use fixed size memory instruction as their primitive. We are proposing a domain-specific architecture for deep learning. Instead of using memory instruction as primitive, we want to raise hardware software interface to accelerate whole tensor contraction as primitive. By doing this, we can streamline hardware, leading to higher performance and better energy efficiency, while providing enough flexibility to support all deep learning models. Tensor contraction is declarative. It's a mathematical expression without explicit scheduling for computation or explicit memory layout for data. The equation on the right is tensor contraction expressed using Einstein notation. If you look at this example, it doesn't show any computation order, parallelism, or how the data is laid out in memory. To transform the tensor contraction expressed in Einstein into primitive that can be executed by architecture, we introduce a low-level Einstein notation. This combines tensor contraction with explicit memory layout and scheduling. I'll explain how this low-level Einstein allows tensor contraction to be executed efficiently as a primitive in our architecture. This is a simplistic example of tensor contraction. The images on the left shows a case where the matrix A and B are multiplied to produce matrix C. This computation can be described using for loops as shown in the middle. From the perspective of actual chip architecture, this computation is executed in parallel by multiple compute unit and SRAM. To keep the explanation simple, let's consider a chip composed of four SRAM blocks and four compute units. We can take the conceptual computation from the previous slide and express it as a scheduling on an actual architecture. Outermost loop in this example represents the axis that is executed in parallel. The innermost loop represents the unique computation executed every cycle. The remaining loops represent the scheduling that utilizes this distributed compute unit over time. We think of this as a single primitive, tensors with memory layout split across multiple SRAMs, and a computation scheduled across both time and space axis. Specifically, when you look at loops that make up temporal scheduling, axis have some additional meanings. For example, the axis marked in blue indicate the data stored in one SRAM are used by multiple compute unit, meaning it can be multicast. The axis marked in red indicate that input data for a unique computation can be reused over consecutive cycles. In this slide, I'll explain the architecture, of ex architecture for accelerating tensor contraction along time and space axis and its advantages. First, looking at architecture on the left, we see that to handle data sequentially read from SRAM in a pipeline manner along the time axis, the compute unit is organized into fetch operation commit stages. We define a slice as a unit that combines one SRAM with one compute unit. In each slice, the fetch unit fetches tensors in order given by the temporal scheduling. Fetch data can then be multicast to multiple operation unit via fetch network. Fetch network can be configured in various topology depending on the given tactic. 
They are supplied through the fetch network is delivered in defined order to the contraction engine. Contraction engine uses the feed, feed buffer to reuse the input data multiple times. As a result, data read once from SRAM can be multicast and fed multiple times. Additionally, with the temporal pipelining, we can continuously utilize a specially distributed and connected compute unit during tensor operations. All data paths, including those fetching multidimensional data continuously, the buffer supplying data to the dot product engine, and the fetch network can be streamlined. How do you operate simply according to tactics defined by software? Software finds optimal tactic to execute the given operation in parallel while maximizing data reuse. Using sliced SRAM and compute unit, flexibly comp configured according to the tactic is more advantageous for inference than having a large matrix multiplication unit. Large matrix multiplication unit can achieve high utilization with, high, with large, large batch sizes. However, during inference, batch sizes can vary widely. Therefore, it's important to exploit inherent parallelism and data reuse from various axis intense operations. Below, we see two configurations using four slices. In the middle configuration, the same data is reused four times through the fetch network. This configuration is similar to large historic array, transferring the same data along the height axis. Alternatively, as shown on the right, every two dot product engines can be configured to calculate a single dot product along the width axis. By configuring multiple slices to fit each tensor operation and pipelining them along the time axis, we can better exploit parallelism and data reuse for a variety of tensor shapes. Along with the scheduling of, of computations, how tensors are laid out, laid out in memory is also very important. The compiler takes the input computational graph and lowers it into primitives. During this process, the compiler maps tensors to on-chip memory, and this significantly impacts performance and efficiency. Firstly, the last axis of memory layout impact memory access performance. For example, whether the stored layout is row, row major or column major, and if it, al it aligns with the way you read it, can impact SRAM, SRAM bandwidth. Secondly, since data is often used across multiple compute units, memory layout impacts data movement, and thus the performance and energy of network on chip. Thirdly, the output tensor of one operator is often the input tensor for the next. Depending on the memory layout of these tensors, additional data movement may occur. Ideally, if we can align the memory layout of input-output tensors of operators, we can completely eliminate unnecessary data movement. The compiler takes any user model as input, generate an executable, and optimize it for end-to-end -end model efficiency. For any given operator's load shape, uh, there is static space composed of permutation of axes. In this architecture, temporal pipelining enables performance prediction by analyzing model X. Therefore, the compiler can select the optimal tactic from this static space based on performance and power estimators. Optimizing an end-to-end -end model involves selecting the optimal load shape for all operators to minimize cost. When consecutive operators share the same load shape, additional data movement can avoid it. This has a similar effect to performing model-wise fusion compared to the traditional method of fusing just two, two or three operators. If the load shape don't match, bridge operators are added and the corresponding cost is considered during optimization. Compiling a model involves optimization across multiple levels of, multiple levels of IRs. These optimization process include operator fusion at graph level, memory allocation, tensor splitting, merging, and scheduling. Uh, Furious IS second product, Rengate, is an implementation of tensor contraction processor for highly efficient inference with LLMs. Rengate features eight P's, each with 60, 64 tops and 32 megabyte SRAM. Each P can function independently or be fused with up to four P's to act as a single large P. Each P includes a general purpose core and a massive tensor unit that support tensor and vector operations, including accelerated tensor contraction capabilities. The tensor unit consists of 64 slices. 
Deep learning models often need more than just tense operations. They also require scalar processing and include control flow. To optimize performance and reduce unnecessary computations, especially depending on sequence length, we need to use tensor unit dynamically, including handling dynamic shapes. For running models and driving tensor unit, we use ARM cores. Previously, we used in-house core, but we switched to ARM because they have a rich toolchain. Core works by pushing command into a tensor unit's command queue, operating asynchronously to drive both tensor unit and tensor DMA. Core ensures the command queue never goes idle by continuously pushing command. These commands include load command for loading control search of tensor unit, execute command to perform tensor operation with the loaded loaded control registers, command to drive tensor DMA, and wait command for synchronization. Except for wait command, everything operates asynchronously, allowing us to hide the tensor DMA and computation effectively. Tensor DMA transfers the unnecessary necessary tensors for the next operation from DRAM to SRAM in an optimized memory layout. Let me provide an overview of the internal structure of each slice. Fetch unit handles multidimensional data access. To provide flexible access to tensors, we support indirect access, indirect access and table lookups based on multiple dimensions. Fetch network is configured with a specific topology for each tensor operation. It uses circuit switching to deliver fetched tensors to multiple operation units. This circuit switch to fetch network is very lightweight and can continuously supply data to the operation unit in a defined order. Operation unit include contraction engine, vector engine, and a transpose engine. Contraction engine consists of a feed unit, multiple dot product engines, register files, and accumulation unit. It receives tensors from fetch unit in a defined order, can feed data multiple times the DPs. It manages the raised files and accumulators corresponding to the DP inputs. Depending on the memory layout, the data product engine and the accumulation unit can perform temporal or spatial data product. It executes construction operation defined by software, which optimizes the use of input, weight, and output station with data reuse to employ the most efficient tactics. In a deep learning model, it's crucial to support various vector operations and tensor manipulation alongside tensor contraction. For example, in deep learning, we need to handle nonlinear functions as well as element-wise operations. Additionally, tensor manipulations such as transpose, split, slice, concat, and reshape are essential. Vector engines and transpose engines can independently handle vector operations and tensor manipulation along with fetch and commit units. They can also perform this operation on the fly right after contraction and contraction operations, which helps reduce SRAM excesses. Vector engines support a wide range of arithmetic operators for 32 bit integer and floating point, and processing processes incoming tensors through streaming for chained processing. It also includes hardware implementation for transcendental functions and support reduction and routing across multiple slices. This setup ensures efficient and flexible processing of various tensor operations other than tensor contraction. Rengate is designed for a wide range of models, but more optimized for LLMs and multimodal models. To deploy in global distributed data center near urban area, we needed an accelerator that support air cooling rather than requiring kilowatt level TTP. Therefore, Rengate is designed with 150 watt TTP. Given the critical importance of memory bandwidth and capacity for LLM inference, Rengate utilizes uh, 48 GB of latest HVM3 memory. Additionally, it includes PCI P2P functionality to enable efficient model parallelism across multiple chips. Rengate supports BF16 to directly handle floating point models, and it also provides precision options for quantization such as INT8, INT4, and FP8. To ensure sustainability of cloud use, each P can function as an independent instance, supporting virtualization and model encryption. In addition to compiler that optimizes for the entire model, we also have a Python-based programming tool that allows us to directly write low-level ISOM operations. We evaluated results by compiling them with the specified tactics and using a cycle accuracy simulator. 
For our evaluation, we use the LAMA 7B model quantized to int A and compared to the FP8 result from the H100 and L4S GPUs. When measuring the latency of the first token with a sequence length of 128, the H100 showed 7 milliseconds while Renegade showed 8 milliseconds. This is likely because the H100 has about four times the compute performance and twice the memory bandwidth compared to the Renegade, excluding sparsity. However, the difference in latency is relatively small compared to the compute performance difference. This is because with a batch size of 1 and sequence length of 128, it's challenging to achieve high GPU utilization, whereas Renegade can achieve relatively high utilization by effectively leveraging parallelism across various tensor axes. From the throughput perspective, Renegade is effective in hiding computation during the decode phase using DMA. As a result, it maximizes performance by fully utilizing given memory bandwidth. Consequently, it delivers 2.7 times throughput per watt for batch size 16 compared to H100, and 4.1 4 time, 4 times for batch size 32 compared to L40S. Uh, let's summarize the talk. We raise the hardware software interface by using tensor contraction as a primitive, a core computation in deep learning. This streamlined hardware enabling exploitation of parallelism and data reuse offers flexibility to adequately support all deep learning models. And Compile could optimize to minimize data movement across the entire models. Rengate is now up and running and making strong progress for commercialization this year. Thank you.